We're back for our next uh, departmental budget discussion. Uh, I'm Mayor David Briley. I'm joined today by Talia Lomax O'Neill, the city's finance director, and Emily Pacini, who's the chief of staff here in the mayor's office. Uh, before we jump into this year's budget, just a little bit of a recap about last year. As you recall, uh, about this time last year, we were learning as a city that we were a little bit short of revenue and wouldn't be able to do the cost of living adjustments we'd hoped to last year. But we tightened our belt and uh, found a way to live within our means in the last few months. And uh, I want to thank the, all the hard work of our employees in terms of doing that over the last year. As a result of that work and some increases in revenue this year, we've been able to find the resources for a cost of living adjustment in the coming year, along with the steps and open range increases that we, we like to give our employees. I hope they will see that as a sign of our appreciation for the hard work they're doing on behalf of the residents of, of Nashville. Uh, our next budget discussion is with Metro Social Services and uh, the Executive D Director Renee uh, Pratt is here with us today. Before you begin, I do, I do know that there's been a lot of efforts in your department over the last year, especially looking at homelessness and with the, the um, better system that we now have with the Homelessness Planning C Council. <laughs> the name has changed a few times, the Homelessness, homelessness Planning Council. And uh, uh, it seems like we're going to be able to draw, draw down more money from the federal government um, for the continuum of, of care as a result of that, of that progress. So, so uh, Renee, if you would introduce yourself and the colleagues who came with you and save a little bit of time for the end, we'll probably have some questions. Great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Um, I'm Renee right. Pratt, Executive Director of Metro Social Services. I have with me our Chief Financial Officer, Lisa Ricketts, and Judy Taggett, who is the Director of our Homeless Impact Division of Metro Social Services. Thank you so much for recognizing our work around homelessness, uh, Mayor. We really appreciate it. And I must say, Judy has just done an excellent job over the past few months and stepping into that role and how effective she is in the community with making things happen around homelessness. So thank you to Judy Tackett. Also thank you Mayor for the cost of living adjustment as well as the incremental steps and open range. On behalf of all of our employees we really appreciate that. Thank you. Metro Social Services provides a range of services to help Davidson County residents who are in need. These services promote positive change for individuals and families in times of crisis and economic hardship. Some of that information is related in the community needs evaluation I brought for you today. Um, we had our release on last week and we found that we are still focusing on issues of housing and we were surprised this year to recognize that there's an issue of hunger in the city as well. So you'll be hearing more about that as the year progresses and as we do presentations here in the community. But I'm pleased to report that we are on target for our FY19 savings of $192,800. We do have salary savings to cover our projected $90,000 over the budget in our indigent burial program and $20,000 over budget in our extreme weather overflow shelter. That was due to a temperature change that occurred last year, which resulted in more days open in 2018 and 2019. As the need grows, financial struggles are not the only challenges that face our clients. There are a host of other destabilizing factors, including domestic violence, mental health, evictions, homelessness, food insecurity, indigent burial, and felony records that require intensive work. In spite of this, we were able to manage more cases without an increase in the number of our social workers. However, over the past several years, as the need grows and we receive additional responsibilities, the conservatorship management, the overflow shelter, the HEROES program, domestic violence cases, and coordinated entry, this situation is really not sustainable. And we therefore are asking for an increase in the number of our caseworkers to match the rising needs. We're also asking for $50,000 for our extreme weather overflow shelter because of last year's temperature change and the number of days that we were open. We're also asking for $50,000 for our indigent burial program 
based on the continued demand of this service that continues to rise year after year. And with that, I will yield the rest of my time to Judy Tackett, who will discuss the other additional budget incentives we're requesting as it relates to the Homeless Management Information System. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me along and presenting today. So um, as uh, I also want to thank last year, I was here uh, presenting the same uh, kind of a heads up, this is what's going to come if we are uh, taking on the homeless management information system. So what is different this year is that, yes, at Metro has our, has, has, is now serving officially as the homeless management information system lead. Uh, I'm going to refer to it as HMS from now on. And as government, Metro is responsible to implement a functional system and make it such. Um, the community and the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development have responded really well to our HMS lead change. They have uh, reached out to me. I have a list of agencies that want to enter into HMS, including the Nashville Rescue Mission is committed to working with us. That is huge news because without entering all our shelters in, that's into um, this database, um, we just wouldn't be able to produce annual numbers for our system and for the community on what homelessness looks like. Um, so, but we can only do so much. We, we really need um, staff to make the system functional. Best practices in other cities and also through HUD uh, TA that we, we've worked with show that a staffing model of one HMAS staff per 75 end users is ideal. We right now have about one staff for 175. Um, and uh, currently we have about 31 agencies that participate in HMAS. We, in our contract, have uh, the ability to work with 217 end users. And uh, right now with the staffing, we are able to work with 160 to 175 and just maintain rather than build up what we have and build um, and, and we lacking a focus on data quality which is where we are working with HMS right now, what needs to be done and leverage funding for that. I have identified over 18, 80, 80 agencies that should uh, ideally enter into HMS just to give where we are and where we should be. Um, what I am asking for is additional staff, uh, three for specifically HM, HMS data management and three for a coordinated entry system. Um, one of the things that uh, really will make a difference for this coming year is to increase the data quality by continuing with work with uh, HMS end users on training and making sure we, we enter quality data. We are uh, receiving support on that, on how to do it and on training for staff and for end users and agencies and also for our committees under the new governance structure uh, from HUD, we're working with them on that. So this is a really good time to actually get that staffing in place. Um, the other will be increase in in-reach capacity, helping to actually get those shelter beds into the system and not waiting. Uh, we really all all in for uh, the, um, uh, the, the, shelter, the support um, center, the, the coordinated entry system center um, that we're looking at. Uh, but we don't need to wait until we have a building. We can actually start working on that now. Um, so that's where uh, that comes in. I just really want to focus and, and stress that HMS is more than just a database. It is really um, affords us to look how people are served. It includes uh, accountability measures for the entire community, how we actually link people to services and to housing. Um, with, um, I was very excited Tuesday about the announcement. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was kind of a gift. But we really, we need a system to make sure that the people that usually fall through the gaps are actually in the mix to enter some of those critical housing units that are going to be created. And HMS can help with that. So. Any questions, Tony? Yeah, I, I just want to have a budget question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm looking at your summary page. Yes. And it says that Metro is 7.2 million uh -huh. in 69 FTEs, uh -huh. correct? Correct. Can you tell me how much of that is for the homelessness function? I just, I just want to make sure I 
understand. Mm -hmm. And how many FTEs were for, specifically uh, for that activity? Nine, but one of them uh, is the crane funded. So uh, there will be 10 people right now for. So 10 of the seven yes. of the 69 is for, mm -hmm. for you, Jeff, is that correct? Yeah, but well, you're asking for a total for it to be 10. Currently, you have. Currently, yeah. you have 10. Yeah. Okay. I think the total will be 10 for the department. I'm asking for six for the division. Right. Okay. It will be, or it, it, <laughs> or it be. is. She's asking for six more. For six the more? Yes. yes. And it's currently 10. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay, I just want to make sure. Are all 10 under your division, Judy, or are they for yes. the whole yes. department? No. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. No, 10 are. For homeless impact yes. division. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just wanted to have some perspective of mm -hmm. what the increase was over the existing mm -hmm. level of services that were provided. And the budget for those 10 is about rough, just roughly. For the whole um, homeless yeah. impact division, it's about $2 million. About right $2 now. million? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, well, that about yeah. close Everything. to $1 million is in grants, goes out in grants. And one so million of that is in grants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I just, again, I just wanted to have a perspective of mm -hmm. uh, the growth. And just, just so I'm clear on it, the homeless information system, the quality of that data depends on all of these partnerships that you have with all these different people throughout yes. the community mm -hmm. and you rely on their participation and willingness to be a partner so that you can get correct data. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. I just yes. want to make sure I'm remembering all. Yes. That. Mm -hmm. So it's really about um, yeah, the data is as good as it's entered. And it's okay. you know. So the role of this new staff would be to work with those partners to make sure that you've got some data integrity kind of checks along the way. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's continuous training. It's mm -hmm. making it sustainable, and then also working with HUD to actually get as we are sending the right data in. And there, I was actually in a presentation uh, uh, yesterday where HUD um, is working on improving how they give, make data quicker available mm -hmm. to back to local communities and make it use of, usable. Right now, it hasn't been usable for our community at all. Right. Right. I know that's been a challenge for yes. me. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's my only question. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Can you just talk a little bit about what data we're, we're tracking? <coughs> is it just the homeless count or is it mm -hmm. beds available? Just what does mm -hmm. that? It is actually, um, it is by name list. We're creating by name lists so we know who is on the streets and in shelters by mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. Link people with the right services and just making a person-centered person approach. The other thing that uh, HMS does, how long does it take for people to be on the streets before they enter housing? Mm -hmm. uh, how do they flow through our system? So there are different intervention models, emergency shelters, transitional housing, rapid rehousing, permanent supportive housing. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going from this to this to this. So we can see where are people actually, what are they using and how are they going through the system? An open system also allows to cut down on a lot of duplication that we have right now. And one of the things uh, that our HMS Oversight Committee, uh, which is also new under the new governance structure, is really working on is opening up that system. Most uh, communities have already an open system. We don't. So they're working on that. And this is all happening right now. I mean, it's really great opportunities to, we've already seen what can happen when we put a governance structure together, mm -hmm. and I've been in touch with HUD is the message and focus on the data in HMAS and uh, increase in data quality if that is the right message to focus on, mm -hmm. and they were like, you're spot on. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Well, I don't really have any questions. I mean, I just uh, thank you for your work, and you mentioned the announcement on Tuesday, <laughs> I guess it was, so just to, for those who are watching, mm -hmm. the. The announcement you're talking about was the Under One Roof uh, 2029 announcement that will create at least a thousand new deeply affordable mm -hmm. units for folks making zero to 30 percent of AMI, mm -hmm. who were those folks probably most at risk of becoming homeless. We'll also create thousands of other units at that next level up that are those folks are a lot of people in the zero to 30 AMI are actually renting in the 60 to yeah. 80 AMI. Mm -hmm. 
So it's going to create a whole lot of new units that hopefully will help with the issues that you're confronting. And then the, I, I don't know if it's gone out yet, but in the next, within days, the RFP for the 100 units of permanent supportive housing for the chronically homeless, mm -hmm. that's going to go out as well. And so we have the funding available. So that'll be 100 units that'll help address a, a long-term problem that we've had in our community. So uh, we're definitely committed to getting more resources at work to confront the issue of homelessness here in Nashville and look forward to working with the uh, social services over the next few years to, to make a real dent in that situation. So thank, thank you. you very much for coming in. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.